Nice to good um, uh, morning. Let us start our lecture today. Um, so some students asked me about the final project. So the final project, I'm going to assign to you the project that you have to do. And normally those will be the project of solving equation, not a project on history, right? So this is a math class, not a history class. So we, we're going to have to do, uh, we have to, uh, we're going to have to learn how to solve equation, not to learn about history. Of course, the history of equation is not an equation, right? Um, um, right, so let us start um, our lecture today. Right, so um, let us, um, so in the previous um, lecture with, uh, with um, 30 case number seven, Um, so you, in this case, you're going to have to solve the second order differential equation with uh, uh, with a source of this type. All right. So this is the. Uh, case number seven, you have a, a force which is a mixed type between polynomial, exponential, and cosine sinus. All right? So, um, so in this case, um, what you want to do is you can see the degree of P, which is M, and the degree of uh, Q, which is N, and you're going to take uh, the maximum of um, M and N. And so uh, the particular solution will be t to the k times uh, uh, a0 plus a1t plus as ts t to the alpha t cosine as beta t plus b0 b1t plus bs ts t to the alpha t sine as beta t. And k is the multiplicity of alpha plus i beta. All right. So this is the equation that we have. So um, uh, this is the the, uh, the mixed type of the force. Um, what you do is you take the maximum of the degree of p and the degree of q, and you put it to be s. All right. And you multiply everything with t to the k. Um, here you're going to put a polynomial of degree s. This is also a polynomial of degree s. All right? Now let's uh, continue another example. So uh, in the exam, for this kind of uh, questions, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm not going to ask you to, to compute a constant. You just have to uh, write out the form of, uh, of xp. All right? Which means that you have to know what is k and what is s. That's it. All right? So, Example, we have x second plus 2x prime plus 5x is t to the cube, t to the power minus s, sine s of 2t. All right? So what is um, s in this case? <coughs> so my question is what is, what is s? Yes? S in this case would be 3. Yes. Oops. So in this case, S is 3 because um, PT will be T to the power 3, QT will be 0. So in PT will be the, uh, I'm sorry, QT will be the uh, polynomial of the sinus, and the polynomial of, uh, polynomial of that sinus is TQ. Uh, which means that um, Q is T cube and P is zero. In this case, M is three and N is zero. So S would be three. Um, now, um, so what is the form of XP? Times e to the negative t times 
cos 2t, and then plus uh, next term, b0 plus b1t plus b2t squared <laughs> plus uh, b3t to the 3, and then times b negative t times sine 2t. Right. Thank you. Uh, so so the, um, the first coefficient will be of order 3, all right? And then you're going to have exponential minus t um, sinus, uh, cosinus of And then you're gonna have b0 plus b1 t plus uh, b2 t square plus b3 t cubed e to the power minus t sinus of 2t. All right, so this is the form. So after you know what is m and n, you take the maximum of them, which is three. So as in this case will be three, you replace it here. You're gonna go get t to the k a0, a1 t, a2 t square, a3 t cubed. So the exponential here will go to here, all right? And the cosinus 2t will go to cosinus, uh, will go from here, so you have cosinus 2t and sinus 2t, all right? It's clear questions? Now what is k? Yes? Why? Okay, can you sign the paper, please? So K is the multiplicity of minus one plus two i um, as a root of uh, I square plus two i plus five is equal to zero. All right? Um, so let us compute the root of this guy. So the two root of this guy will be computed by taking, uh, first you have to compute the delta, which is two squared minus four times five, and this is four minus 20, and this is minus 60. All right? So the delta will be this guy squared minus four times the first and the last. So this is minus 16. Um, so the two root will be minus two plus or minus the square root of delta dividing by two, two times the first constant, all right? So this is minus two plus or minus square root of minus 16 over two, and this is minus two plus or minus uh, four i over two, which means that this is minus one plus or minus two i. All right, so this is a solution. I explain again. So k will be the multiplicity of minus one plus two i, right? So the minus one is going from here. <coughs> and the two goes from here, all right? You have minus one plus two i. So this is the multiplicity of this guy as the root of r squared plus two i plus five is equal to zero. Uh, so in this case, uh, the, the delta will be two squared minus four times five, and this is four minus 20, and this is minus 16, right? So the two root will be minus the coefficient here, plus or minus the square root of delta, divided by two times the first constant, and this is minus one plus or uh, minus two i. So which means that the multiplicity is one, because minus one plus two i is also a solution of the equation. <coughs> All right, so which means that in this case, xp will be t a0 plus a1 t plus a2 t squared plus a3 t cubed e to the power minus t cosine t plus b0 b1 t t squared b3 t cubed. So, so for after this step, you know the case one, you, you replace it into the formula, and that's it. Um, for the, those cases, what you have to do is to know how to use the table, that's it. So for previous case, they're easier, but you have to compute a constant, yes? Shouldn't it be cosine of sine 2t? Yes, thank you. 
in this end of my first paper piece. Other questions? It's clear. So the last thing that we, uh, uh, so basically we start with case seven. We don't go further to the, to the higher cases, all right? Um, so let us um, finish everything with one question, one example where you uh, have to, from, to solve the initial value problem. Um, so example, now you have to consider this equation, and then you, you have to solve it with two initial conditions. All right? So the last thing you, you have, you, you're gonna know, is how to solve uh, the second order differential equation with constant coefficient uh, in homogeneous, and then this is uh, with uh, initial con conditions, all right? Um, so how do we solve this equation? First step. Yes? Can you find what form the, um, the right side is? Of, like which case it belongs to? And oh. you do the okay. Can you say the back of paper, please? So, okay. uh, so step number one. Um, you you have to find x feet, right? You have to find x feet. All right, so you have to find a particular solution of this type. So what case do we, uh, do we have? Yes. Case two. Okay, so can you sign back the paper, please? So this is case two. Um, so so according to case two, what is the form of x feet? Yes? So it's a t to k e to the So what is alpha t? Uh, over the negative one. Yes, can you say the micro paper, please? All right, so according to the table, right? Uh, uh, Sp has to be of the form a t to the k um, e to the power minus t. Now, what is the, the k? Yes? Um, the multiplicity of negative one as a solution of the characteristic. Yes, can you send the back to the paper, paper please? So, my, 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 uh, K is the multiplicity of minus one as the, as the <coughs> of the equation. R square minus one equal to zero. Right, so this is a characteristic equation of the equation. Um, yes? Can you give me the actual properties of the equation? Uh, don't know. I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> so, but I, I think I put a, a picture of that on my canvas. Okay. You can um, you can download that. Uh, so, uh, so xp will be a t to the k is to power minus t. Um, k will be the multiplicity of this minus one as a solution of the characteristic equation, all right? Um, so in this case, what is the value of k? Yes? One. Yes, can you sign the back of paper, please? So, so this equation has two, two rules, right? Plus or minus one. Uh, so this equation has, a two, uh, has two roots, plus or minus one. So, uh, so now you, um, you get, you deduce that uh, k is one. So this gives you a t to the exponential of minus t. All right? 
three approaches. Uh, right. So what is the next step? Yes. When s p to the original equation is y minus a. Yes. Can you just hand the back the paper, please? So now we're gonna plug this form into the equation to find a. All right. So x p prime will be a t e to the power minus t prime. Uh, so what is the value of this? Can you say the back of paper, please? So this gives you a e to the power minus t minus t e to the power minus t. All right? So, so in order to take the derivative of this one, you take the derivative of the first guy times the second guy plus the first guy times the derivative of the second guy. All right? So the derivative of the first guy is 1, which because the derivative of t is 1, uh, so this is e to the power minus t. The derivative of the second guy is minus e to the power minus t. So this is uh, this one. So now I have to take the second derivative. What is the second derivative of this guy? Yes? Uh, AT is in AAT plus BAT is AT. Can you say at the back of paper, please? So now you're going to take the derivative of this guy, right? So the first derivative give you minus E to the minus T. For this one, you're going to take the now, uh, you want to use the product rule, so this is e to the power minus t plus t e to the power minus t. So basically, this is a t e to the power minus t minus 2 e to the power minus t. Right? I explain again. Uh, so xp is a e to the power minus t, right? You're going to take the first derivative. The first derivative will be uh, computed by uh, product rule. Take the derivative of one, you get e to the power minus t. Take the derivative of the second guy, you get you get minus t e to the power minus t. Now you're gonna have to take the second derivative, right? So the first the derivative of this one is minus uh, e to the power minus t. The derivative of this one will be minus e to the power minus t plus t e to the power minus t. You combine everything, you get you get a times t e to the power minus t minus two times e to the power minus t. Questions? Good. Right. So, um, so um, we are combine everything. So you're gonna have to uh, take x p second minus x p, and this gives you a times p e to the power minus c minus two um, e to the power minus c, and then the other guy is minus a b to the power minus t, right? So the next step is to replace everything that we found here into the equation, all right? So this uh, value, I'm going to put it here because this is xp second. And this is minus xp, so I, I just have to put this form here, all right? So what is the, uh, what, what is the, the, the final result of, of I mean, can you simplify this expression? Yes? Can we still use the a to the first step plus because it's minus 2a? Yes. Can you sign the back of the paper, please? So basically, uh, this guy and this guy, they cancel out, right? So finally, what you have is 2a e to the power minus t, which means that. Um, which means that 3 e to the power minus c is xp second as xp, and this is also equal to 2a e to the power minus c, right? So what is the value of a? Mm. Yes? Yes, can you side effect of paper, please? So the value of a will be 3 over 2. Can you sign the back of the paper, please? So there's a minus here, because when you uh, simplify this and this, there's a minus. 
So you have minus i e to the power minus t is equal to 3 e to the power minus t. All right, questions? All right, so uh, let us uh, go to step number two. Right? So what is step number two? Yes? You write the general solution so that way then you can solve for C1 and C2 with yes. the initial one. Uh, yes, can you send the back of the paper, please? So basically, you have to find a general solution, right? So in order to do that, you have to solve the homogeneous equation. So you have x second minus x is zero. So do, how do I solve this homogeneous equation? Yes? Yes, can you send the back of the paper, please? <coughs> so to solve this equation, you're going to use the characteristic equation, all right? So we know that this characteristic equation has two groups. Um, so you have to root one or minus one, right? So with these um, two roots, um, how can you um, have the, the solution of the homogeneous equation? Yes? Uh, because there are two real roots, the solutions will be e to the one times t, which is just e to the t, and then e to the negative one times t, so e to the minus t. Yes, I have a better place for this. So um, from this, you're going to have um, C1 e to the R1t, right? Plus C2 e to the R2t. This gives you C1 e to the t plus C2 e to the power minus t. Right? Questions? Right. So what is the, the form of the general solution? Yes? X to T equals C1 E to the T plus C2 E to the negative T plus the particular solution. Right. Can you say the back of the paper, please? Um, so, so the, the solution will be C1 E to the T plus C2 E to the power minus T plus uh, minus 3 over 2 T E to the power minus T. Alright? So basically, this is the uh, form of the general, uh, uh, the general, um, the form of the general solution, right? It's okay. Right. So now, uh, now, what is the next step? Yes. Well, now you can solve for C one and C two right. using the initial. Can you sign the back of the paper, please? So step number three, find C1 and C2, right? So you're going to use the initial condition. The first initial condition is x1 is 0, which leads to C1 e to the 0 plus C2 e to the 0 minus 3 over 2, 0 e to the 0 is 0, which means that C1 plus C2 is zero, all right? Uh, so, the uh, the next step that we have to do is to find C1 and C2, right? So, um, because x0 is zero, you have C1 is zero, plus C2 is zero, minus three over two, zero is zero, is zero. You re because here this is one and this is one, so you have C1 plus C2 is zero, all right? Right, so now let us compute x prime of t to use the second uh, condition, right? So you have C1 e to the t minus C2 e to the power minus t minus 3 over t, t e to the power minus t prime, right? Um, so, uh, so in order to use the second uh, boundary condition, uh, initial condition, what I have to do is I have to compute the derivative of this guy. Uh, so the derivative of C1 e to the t is C1 e to the t the derivative of c2 e to the power minus t is minus c2 e to the power minus t. The derivative of this guy is the derivative of this guy. So I have to compute this derivative. Um, so this gives me 
C1 e to the t minus C2 e to the power minus t minus 3 over 2 e to the power minus t plus minus t e to the power minus t. All right? Questions? Now, what is the second equation? For C1 and C2. Yes? The question is, what is the second equation for C1 and C2? Like the, the first derivative of x? Yes. Uh, uh, C1 e to t minus C2 e to the negative t plus 3 over 2 t e to the negative t plus 3 over 2 t to the negative t. But, yes, but I have to replace zero there, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, are you saying? That's yes. Be, OK, continue. <clears throat> C1 minus C2 minus here. Minus 3 over 2. Yeah. Can you send the back of the paper, please? Um, um, so you have x prime at 0 is 1, which means that you have C1, right, minus C2, e to the 0, minus 3 over 2, e to the 0, minus 0, e to 0 is 1, right? You replace one uh, zero into all of those expressions. You have c one e to the zero minus c two e to the zero minus three over two e to the zero minus zero e to the zero. So here this is c one minus c two minus three over two, and this is equal to one, which means that c one minus c two is phi over two, right? Now you have to find c one and c two. So you combine this one and this one. All right. So C1 plus C2 is 0. C1 minus C2 is phi over 2. All right? So you combine the two and you get a system. How do I solve for C1 and C2? Yes? Can you send the back of paper, please? So you're going to sum uh, these two equations, right? So you have C1 plus C2 plus C1 minus C2 is 5 over 2. So 2C1 is 5 over 2. So uh, C1 is 5 over 2 form. Uh, and so C1 plus C2 is 0, which means that C2 is minus C1, and this is minus 5 over 4. All right? I explain again. C1 plus C2 is 0. C1 minus C2 is 5 over 2. What I do is I take a sum of the two equations. I have C1 plus C2 plus C1 minus C2 is 5 over 2. This means that 2C1 is 5 over 2, which means that C1 is 5 over 4. Uh, so uh, because C1 and C2, uh, uh, C1 plus C2 is 0, so C, uh, C2 is minus 5 over uh, 4. Right? Questions? Yes? going to this one or what what is your question right so we're taking so we're taking the first derivative right yes so this is e to power minus c minus second, c2 and then we're taking a second derivative no we are not taking a second derivative no, okay. we just replace the second bounding condition here oh, okay. right so you plug zero there right yeah. and then you you get one other questions All right, so, so basically we uh, know how to solve uh, second order differential equation with constant coefficient. Um, the method is the, uh, so you have uh, uh, the method of undetermined coefficient 
and this uh, particular solution, right? Um, so now, um, we're gonna move to the next uh, technique, which is the Laplace transform. All right, so the Laplace transform, <coughs> you see that the Laplace transform can be used to solve second order differential equation with non-constant coefficient. All right, so this is more difficult. Transform. All right, so the goal of the Laplace transform is to solve equation. I mean, we don't care about the order of first, second, third order with non constant provision. All right, solving um, equation with non constant. So the form of the Laplace transform is the following. Fs is the Laplace, right? Given a function, a function um, um, Ft, um, the Laplace transform of f is another function. Uh, defined by f of s, which is equal to l of ft, and this is into open zero to infinity even k s t f t t. All right, I explain again. So, so the goal of the Laplace transform is to solve equation with non-constant coefficient, all right? So, the definition of the Laplace transform is as follows. I give you a function ft. The Laplace transform of this function is a different function. Um, this different function can be computed this way. So you take the product of ft and e to the power minus st, and you integrate it, right? So t will be disappear because you integrate out. So what is the variable uh, in this function? What is the variable in this function? Yes? The variable is s. Right. Can you send the magnet paper, please? So since in Power minus s f t d t the variable t is integrated out um, this is So basically, you take the function, you take um, the product of that function with exponential minus st, and you integrate out the t, right? So, uh, which means that in this uh, interval, the only variable is, is s. So you change the function of a variable t into a new function of variable s, right? We transform a function variable t into a new function with variable s. All right? Any questions? That's good. Right. 
So, so let us uh, uh, consider one example. Um, uh, example one. The Laplace transform of the function Ft is equal to e to the power t, right? So now I have a function Ft, which is uh, e to the power t. I have to compute a Laplace transform of this function, right? So according to the definition, what is the form of this Laplace transform? <coughs> So the, the, the Laplace transform will be integral from 0 to infinity e to power minus st times e to the t dt. All right? So the Laplace transform of e to the t will be the integral of the product of S, uh, e to power minus st and, and e to the t. Right? And now I have to compute this integral. So I compute this integral, and this is integral from 0 to infinity e to the t 1 minus s dt, right? So I do it slow, slowly. Uh, so f s will be e to the t minus s t dt, and this is going to be integral from 0 to infinity of e 1 minus s t dt. All right? Questions? Right, so I have to compute this integral. So I have to put e to the t and e to the power minus st together. This gives me t minus st. Right, so here I have t minus st. t minus st is 1 minus s times t. Now, what, uh, how can I compute this integral? Yes? Uh, isn't the integral, so the, the result can be the antiderivative to the t times 1 minus s over um, uh, divided by 1 minus s in the bottom, yes, and yes. the limits and integration are 0. Yes. Can you send the back of this? This is a good, very good question, but how do you get this uh, result? Um, because we know that the derivative of e to the t is also e to the t and 1 minus s. Can, we can consider that a constant because we're integrating with respect to t and not with respect to s. Right. So, so what you do is uh, a change of variable, right? So we, we do the change of variable. We do the change of variable. Variable. Um, um, 1 minus s of t is equal to y. Right? So you change the variable, so you change this into y. Uh, so in this case, what is dy? Uh, dy I want to, 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 to do this in a new variable, right? So how, uh, what, yes? Uh, the derivative of y is going to be um, 1 minus s times dt. Right, can you say it? And the back of the paper, please. So basically, this is 1 minus s dt, right? Because you are uh, integrating t, so s is a constant. Uh, if I put y to be 1 minus s t, then dy the is 1 minus s dt, all right? Which means that ms will be the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the y. So here I have dt. So this is dy over 1 minus s, right? So, so which means that dt is dy over 1 minus s, all right? It's good. Uh, I explain again. So here, I have to do the change of variable. I change the variable from t to y, right? But to change the variable from t to y, I have to multiply t with a constant. This constant is 1 minus s, 
which means that the, the dy will be 1 minus s dt. All right? So when I change to y, I have to uh, to divide by 1 minus s. All right, so this here we uh, um, right, so, so I wrote something like that. Is it correct? You didn't change the limits of integration. They're right. still in terms of t. Right, right. So, so here I, I, I so I changed the y, right? So I changed the, this into y. This is okay dt into dy, this is okay, but the integration, uh, I have to change the limit as well, right? So this is the still the limit of, of y. Uh, so, so this is something that I have to consider, right? So, so when t is going from zero to infinity, uh, what is the value of y? So you have to consider three cases. One minus s is positive, one minus s is negative, and one minus s is zero, <laughs> right? So, so there are three cases. Case number one. Uh, case number one, um, one minus s is positive, all right? So when one minus s is positive, y is going from zero to infinity as well. So if 1 minus s is positive, you multiply something uh, uh, t with a positive constant, which means that this is still going from 0 to infinity. So case number 2, uh, 1 minus s is negative. So y is, y goes, what, where is y going? Yes? Negative infinity to zero? Yes, can you sign the back of the paper, please? From minus infinity to zero. All right? So, case number three. When s minus one is zero, what happened? Zero to zero. Right, right. Can you sign back the paper, please? So y will be zero. So we cannot do the change of variable. <coughs> All right. So if s is one, you cannot do the change of variable. All right. So let us consider each cases, um, uh, the, the, those cases separately. Right. So the easiest case will be case number two. But let's consider case number one first. Uh, so in case number one, one minus s is positive, the interval of y is from zero to infinity, which means that I have to do ms is going to be the interval from zero to infinity of e to the y dy over one minus s. All right? So what is the antiderivative of e to the y? Yes, can you sign the back of the paper, please? So the outside derivative of this guy is e to the y, right? e to the y, and you take the difference between zero and infinity. Uh, so what is the value of this uh, guy? Yes? e to the infinity will be infinity, so won't you have to use the infinity? Yes, can you sign the back of the paper, please? So this gives you infinity. In this case, you don't have the Laplace transform, right? Because this value is infinity. T. All right, so case number two. Ms will be integral from in minus infinity to zero, 
e to the y dy 1 minus s all right this gives me 1 minus s the antiderivative of e to y is e to y and you have to do the difference between 0 to infinity right and what is the value of this guy yes Right. Can you say the back of paper, please? So e to the zero will be one. E to the pi power minus infinity will be zero. Right? So this is one over one minus s, e to the zero minus e to my power minus infinity. So this is one and this is zero. So Laplace transform is one minus s. Alright? Questions? Right, so case number three. Case number three. S is one. So what happened when S is one? Yes? One over one minus S will be zero, or will be undefined, so yeah, zero. Okay, send the back of paper, please. Uh, so, so when S is uh, one, uh, you don't have the Laplace transform either. Why? Because when you, you you have e to the power minus s t, right? e to the t dt will be e to the power minus t e to the t dt. And this is also the integral of 1 from 0 to infinity, and this is infinity. Right? So when s is 1, you replace s into the Laplace transform. You have e to the power minus s times e to the t. All right? Um, so you have e to power minus t times e to power minus t. This and this cancel out, right? So you have one. You have to integrate from zero to infinity of one. This is infinite, right? So in general, there's no Laplace transform when s is one. So the only case that you have Laplace transform is this one, right? Any questions? It's good. So basically, uh, Laplace transform is a uh, transformation that transform a function in t into a new function in s so you change one variable into the other right so but the magic of the tra Laplace transform is that you can transform all of the derivative uh, so that when in differential equation you change all of the uh, all of the derivative of a differential equation into a, a normal equation so we we'll see that in a, in a minute but let us try to do the next thing which is the following So example number two. So the meaning of the, so for the Laplace transform, normally we call it LF. Uh, the, the, right, so the function F is the function of T. So this is the notation for the Laplace transform. Um, this is the Laplace. L means Laplace. So the L of F means Laplace transform of F, right? This is Laplace transform of F. is the new variable, right? 
basically um, in our books you see that the Laplace transform is denoted by L of f so the L means Laplace uh, the f is the function and s is the new variable right so the original variable is t but you integrate that out so the so you you have a new variable which is s right so now let us try to compute the laplace transform of this guy uh, laplace transform of f in terms of s will be the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the power minus st at t dt all right so how do we compute this integral? Yes? separate this integral to 4 Yes. 0 to 2 to 4 and 4 Yes, can you sign the bank of paper, please? So you're going to separate this into 3, right? So uh, you're going to have 0 to 2 e to the power minus s t times 0 dt plus 2 to 4 e to the power minus st times 3 dt plus 4 to infinity of e to the power minus st times 0 dt. All right? So do you want to separate this into three? Uh, the first one is, you put 0 here, so you have e to the power minus st times 0. Second one is e to the power minus st times 3 because the function is 3 from 2 to 4, and this is um, 0 from 4 to infinity, right? So the, so this is going to be 0, because it's 0, and this is going to be 0. So what is left over is, is, the, is the, the integral from 2 to 4 of e to the power minus st times 3 dt, right? So how do I compute this? How do I compute this interval? Yes? Uh, do we set y to minus st and then calculate dy so we can change uh, dt into dy and yes. then adjust our limits so we can integrate with respect to y? Yes, can you sign the back of the paper, please? Uh, the first thing is that this is going to be three times of uh, 2 to 4 e to the power of st dt, right? So now we're going to set y to be minus st. So, so you set y to be minus st, so uh, dy will be 1. Yes? So what is dy? Yes? Can you sign the back of paper, please? Minus s dt. So, so t is um, uh, 2 to 4, so y is minus s, t is a uh, y. So if t is going from 2 to 4, where is minus, where is, uh, minus s, t going? Yes? Is it just minus 2s to minus 4s? Yes. Minus 2s to minus 5s, right? All right. So, so I'm going to uh, plug everything here. So this interval will give me, me so this gives me minus 1 over s, integral from minus 2s to minus 4s, e to the y dy. All right? It's good. Now, uh, what, what is the value of this integral? Yes? Uh, do we still keep the 3 as well? Yes, thank you. Yes. Uh, so the, in the integral of even y is just even y, so it would be e to the, uh, sorry, negative 3 over s uh, times e to the negative 4s minus e to the negative 2s. 
can you say the back of paper, please? So the antiderivative of e to the y is just e to the y. So what you do is to replace it there. And then you, you take the difference between minus 2s and minus 4s. So this gives me minus 3 over s, e to the power minus 4s minus e to the power minus 2s. Yes? Does it matter that it's not um, greater or equal to 2? Yeah, what happens if you change this to this? Uh, then it's the same. Right. So, so if you change this to this, or this to this, it's going to be the same. Right. So it doesn't matter. This is going to give you the same Laplace transform. Now, there's one thing in this computation that might not be true. What is it? Yes? It's not negative, positive. The problem is close to that, but not that. Yeah. Yes, can you sign the back of the paper, please? So here I have to divide by s, which is uh, not good when s is zero, right? So this is uh, happens when s is only different from zero. So now we have to do the case when s is equal to zero uh, in a different way. So this is what uh, happens when s is zero. Uh, now, when, when s is zero, when s is zero, what's, what is uh, Laplace transform? What happened to this interval when s is zero? Yes? Uh, when s is equal to zero, it will be e to the zero inside our integral, which means it will be um, three times Can you say in the back of the paper, please? When s is zero, I just replace it here. I don't have to do anything which is complicated. Uh, uh, so when s is zero, I have interval from zero to four of e to the uh, zero t times three dt. And this is interval from two to four, three dt, right? So the antiderivative of three is three t. So basically you have three t, two to four, and this gives me three times four minus three times two, and this is six, that's it. All right, so when x is uh, zero, uh, the Laplace transform will be six, all right? So basically, con conclusion, the Laplace transform um, Fs of Lf will be equal to uh, minus 3 of s, e to the power minus 4s, minus e to the 2s, when s is not 0. And it's going to be 6 when s is 0. All right? Yes? So, so when s is, so you are afraid that um, when s is uh, negative, this is bigger than this one, and when s is positive, this is bigger than this one, right? Yeah. Um, so this is the same because because this interval doesn't mean that this is bigger than this, right? So uh, this is a very good question. So when we write Interval from A to B, this doesn't mean B is bigger than or equal, than or equal to A, right? When you write the interval from A to B, but uh, this doesn't mean that B is bigger than A. Um, so, so indeed, you have the interval from A to B of uh, a function a g t d t will be minus the interval from B to A of G T D T. Right? <coughs> so, so when you write an interval from A to B, this doesn't mean that the, the, the upper guy is bigger than the lower guy. 
um, if the big uh, so you can you can just change the, the limit by adding an minus into the into the integration right so here you we don't have to worry if uh, minus 5s is bigger or minus 2s is bigger Okay. Other questions? It's good. All right. So, um, so now let let us let us try to um, do another thing, which is the Laplace transform of function one. Example. So you have ft is 1 for t, and you want to compute a Laplace transform of f. Yes. We want to compute a Laplace transform of the function 1. All right? This is the Laplace transform of the function one. So the Laplace fun transform of this guy will be integral from zero to infinity of one e, um, e to the power minus s t times one d p. All right. Uh, which means that this. So this is the f t. I just write f t. And then this is going to. Integral from zero to infinity of e minus s t times one d t, right? So how how can I compute this integral? Uh, we could set y again to minus s t, and this d y is minus s. Right. Can you sign the back of paper, please? All right. So so it's always the same trick. You have to do the change of variable trick, and and in this case again the change of variable will be y is minus s t, right? So, so when y is minus s t, what is dy? Uh, yes? Yes, can you sign it back to the paper, please? So this is going from minus s to d. Right? Uh, mm, um, so, so dy is now minus s dt, all right? Now I have to worry about what? Yes? Uh, uh, yes, can you sign the back of the paper, please? So now I have to worry about the limit, all right? So, um, so case number one, um, S is bigger than zero. Uh, so, yes, S, S, uh, so let's, S is smaller than zero. So what happened when s is smaller than zero? <coughs> yes? Why go from zero to infinity? Because the s will be more positive. Yes, can you say the back of paper, please? So when s is negative, um, when x is, when x is goes, uh, uh, when x go from zero to infinity, um, y <coughs> goes from zero to to uh, what? So s is negative to so two infinity. Right. I just know uh, that is what I can do. Yes. So when s is negative, where um, uh, uh, s is negative means that when x is go, going from zero to infinity, y is going from zero to infinity. All right. So, so I have to change this into the point. Integral from zero to infinity of e to the y dy minus s. Right. What is the value of this integral? Can 
inside the back of the playbook is e. So here I have e to the s minus s, and I have to evaluate it from 0 to infinity, right? So what is the, the, um, uh, the value of this uh, in result? Yes? Yes, it's infinity, right? So this is e to the infinity minus e to the 0 minus s, and this is infinity, right? Um, so I explain again. Case number one, s is negative. So when s is negative, because y is minus st, so when x is going from 0 to infinity, y goes from 0 to infinity, all right? Um, so here I have 0 infinity into y dy minus s. Um, so, uh, so that time the derivative of e to the y is e to the y. I replace this here. I have e to the y over minus s, and I evaluate from zero to infinity. All right. Uh, uh, so, so when I evaluate this, I have e to the infinity minus e to the zero. This is infinity. So the, the result is infinity. Right. So in this case, you don't have the Laplace transform. Case number uh, two. Case number two, s is equal to zero. So what happened when s is equal to zero? Yes? Y is equal to zero. Uh, yes, and? And the bound can be changed, which is just from zero, zero. Yes. Can you stand the back of the paper, please? So when s is zero, <coughs> basically y is zero, right? Which means that here you have only an interval of one. This is, the, uh, this is uh, infinity, right? So you have the interval from 0 to infinity of e to the power minus, minus 0 t times 1 dt, and this is the interval from 0 to infinity of 1 dt, and this is infinity. All right? So in, in, in the second case, you replace s to be 0 into interval. When you replace 0 into, to, into the interval, you have 1 times 1, and you have to integrate from 0 to infinity, this gives you uh, infinity. And this is, uh, this is, um, uh, so in this case you don't have, you don't have the Laplace transform. It's clear? Now, case number three. Case number three is S is uh, positive. Right, so when? Um, so when s is positive, when um, y, uh, when when um, t goes from zero to infinity, y goes from. So when s is positive, uh, where's where's y going? Yes. Can you sign the back? Of the paper, please. So y goes from zero to in, to minus infinity. All right. Um, so which means that uh, the, the the transform can be written like in, integral from zero to minus in, infinity of e to the power minus y e to the y dividing by minus s. All right. So in this case, I change uh, minus st to y and dt to dy over minus s, all right? Uh, when t is going from 0 to infinity, y is going from 0 to minus infinity. So here I put 0 to minus infinity, right? What is the um, value of this interval? Yes? 1 over negative s? Yes. Uh, 1 over s. Can you sign the back of paper, please? So this gives you. Uh, minus 1 over s times e to the y, right? Minus 1 over s is the, um, uh, uh, minus 1 over s is the constant, and e to the y is the function that you have to integrate, right? So what you do is you take the uh, antiderivative of e to the y and you evaluate that at 0 and uh, minus infinity. <coughs> right, so... And so this gives me 
uh, minus 1 over s e to the minus infinity minus e to the 0, right? e, e to the power minus infinity is 0, right? Because it's becoming very big. So this is 0, and this is 1. So finally, you get 1 over s. Questions? I explain again. In the last case, I define minus st to be y. So here I'm going to replace uh, e to the power minus st with e to the y. Um, and uh, I replace dt with dy over minus s. Right? Uh, so because t is going from 0 to infinity, y is going from 0 to minus infinity. So you see that here I don't care about the uh, which one is bigger. Because if I change minus uh, infinity to, to the one below, I have to change the sign of the interval, right? Um, so, so y is going from 0 to minus infinity. So here I have 0 to minus infinity e to y dy dividing by minus s. So, um, so um, the antenna root key of e to the y is e to the y. I replace e to y here, and have, I have to evaluate 0 and minus infinity. So here I have e to the power minus infinity, and here I have e to the 0. This is going to be 0, and this is 1. Uh, which means that the Laplace transform is 1 of s, right? So the Laplace transform of f is, is going to be 1 over s uh, when s is uh, negative, uh, s is positive, and not defined elsewhere. All right, so this um, is going to be 1 over s only when s is positive, and this is not defined when s is 0 or negative. And so this is a function uh, uh, defined only on half of the line. Yes? I just had one question just to make sure I'm not going crazy. In case 2, when um, s is equal to 0, mm -hmm. we don't have to change the limits of integration, right? Because y is also equal to 0, and therefore right. it's the same. Right, so in the case 2, you don't change the, you don't do the change of variable because y is 0. When y is zero, there's no mean, uh, there's no mean, um, meaningful um, uh, reason for changing um, y uh, s into y. Right, right, right. So, um, right. So let us uh, state the following theorem. So theorem uh, so for function f function f t if um, L of M S exists then um, it is unique. This means that there um, uh, is no function that has two Laplace transform. <laughs> All right. So, so if I give you a function and you say that okay, there is. Uh, Laplace transform at this point s of this function, then this one has to be unique. You don't have two Laplace transform of one function. All right. So the Laplace transform uh, is always unique because you cannot find two Laplace transform for one function. Right. So there is no function with two Laplace transform. All right. So. Um, so and then, so in in some sense. You are okay to do the Laplace transform if you if you if you uh, if you have one uh, function, then there is one Laplace transform, and if you have one Laplace transform, you have one original function. All right? Questions? Uh, we are not going to prove this theorem because we are mm, mm, uh, going only to the computational part, right? Um, so. Right. So. So let me uh, 
So now let me state another theorem, but we are not going to prove that uh, theorem. We just know that, uh, uh, that there, is, uh, uh, there is such a theorem. Right. So term of discontinuity. So you have the limit when x t tend to a plus f t is going to be l plus, and the limit when t tend to a minus of f t is going to be l minus um, uh, l. So f has a term at a right. Um, so the next concept that we have to know is the term. So I just mentioned the term um, to state the condition on which you can have a Laplace transform. What is the term? My example. Right. So you have a function ft which is uh, minus one when x is negative, uh, when t is negative and one when t is bigger than or equal to zero. Minus one and one. So this is the function ft, and this is the chunk. Right? So in this, uh, in this picture, you see that uh, I have a function, this function is minus one from zero to minus zero to uh, z minus infinity to zero. And then this function is one from zero to infinity. So the, the graph will be a line like this and a line like this. You see, um, at this point, at this point, x is equal to zero. The function is discontinuous. And this is called the chunk, right? So. So in other words, you look at a point, if the left limit is different from the right limit, then this is the chunk, right? Watch this. Right. right, so now a function is said to be um, this one is continuous continuous if it has a finite number of terms So a function is said to be piecewise continuous is if it has a finite number of jumps. For instance, this guy is piecewise continuous because it has one jump. All right. Uh, another function is following. So you have f t is equal to three when t is bigger than one. Uh, uh, t when t is from one to zero and minus two when t is smaller than zero. Right, so this is a piecewise continuous function. So this is a, this is this function. This function is minus two when uh, minus two when uh, t is smaller than zero. This function is going to be t when t is going from zero to one, and this is going to be three when um, t is bigger than one. And this is a, a, a piecewise continuous function because you have two terms. One term is here, right at the point zero, and one term is here at the point one. Uh, so we're gonna. 
uh, continue on Tuesday.